Hi, this is Beyond Sunday, where we take a look at practices available to us for spiritual growth as we engage in the Bible lessons that come up on Sunday morning. This is the lesson for August 28th, 2022, from Luke chapter 14. In this lesson, uh, Jesus is invited to a party, a banquet at the house of a leader of the Pharisees, and his eyes are open because he sees a very common activity occurring um, when people get together among other people who have power and prestige and authority. And he makes a very astute observation. And so I call this the best seats in the house. And let me share the screen with you. And so this uh, uh, lesson comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 14. Let's take a look at the passage and then uh, engage in some questions and ponderings that'll help you to examine what are the eternal wisdom that is offered in this lesson and, uh, and what are practices that, that you can engage in to open yourself up to the great wisdom of Jesus Christ. And so this is the lesson for Sunday, um, Luke 14, beginning at verse one. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host and the host who invited both you, uh, both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher, and then you'll be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. You might have noticed good old Bob Euchre there in, in uh, the picture as we're looking at it. Um, Euchre uh, has the ability with his humor through the decades to, uh, to make fun of himself and to touch upon the, the very activity and habits of human relationships um, and, and the human ego. Um, you know, in that famous commercial from like 40 years ago. Uh, Bob Euchre is convinced that he's got, he must be in the front row. He must have the best seats in the house. But he is humiliated to learn that, no, his seats are in the last row. Uh, even though there's no one else in the section, his seat is in the last row in the upper deck, the furthest it could possibly be. It is humiliating. And maybe we've all been there and had a moment with not a whole lot of humor in our heart when we've been humiliated. And so Jesus is looking into this and examining this practice of ours that enslaves us and chains us. And so as we engage in some spiritual practices this week, um, uh, we're going to explore that together. Uh, and so let's look at uh, the Beyond Sunday opportunities we have here this week. So recall a time when you got to sit in the best seats in the house, where it was quite the opposite of Bob Euchre. You made it. 
um, you got the best seat and that is where you uh, were meant to be. Well, how did that happen? Think about that. And how did you feel when you finally arrived? And I wonder, are you still sitting in those best seats? And then take a, take a closer look at the passage again. Again, it's Luke 14, verse 1, and then 7 through 14. Um, what does Jesus notice? One thing that, that came out of this reading is the reason that Jesus was invited is, is that the Pharisees kind of wanted to keep an eye on him. But it ends up being Jesus keeping an eye on them. Well, what does he see? And do such scenes happen today as Jesus described in the wedding banquet? Um, is it just at wedding banquets or at uh, um, you know, high powered lunches among uh, powerful people? Where does this sort of thing happen? And why does such human activity harm us and harm community? What, what happens to you when maybe you're not in a joking mood and you end up in the Euchre seats? And what does it say about a community that would do this to one another? Well, Jesus gives us a prescription to do the opposite. And so what can possibly happen um, when we allow ourselves to engage humbly from a, a natural place in our heart in such social situations? Um, what good things can be produced? Jesus described some, but maybe you can go further. And then, um, you know, the great value here is that there's some insightful exercises that come out of today's reading. Um, so look to humble yourself in a future situation. And, you know, when you do that, when you humble yourself, pay attention, allow yourself to not get caught up as we so often are. We, we so often just fall into those natural habits, but with some intentionality, maybe engage um, you know, in a situation with, with, with whatever true humility you have already in your character and in your heart. And just notice what happens when you are humble, when you aren't seeking to be the best or to be acknowledged as the best or to have that best seat. Notice what happens in your heart. What, what's screaming at you, that voice? Is, Come on, why aren't they noticing me? Um, you know, what does that voice saying to you? Really, um, a practice like this can be a great spiritual director in revealing something we don't often naturally notice about ourselves. And this is the kind of practice that I, it, it takes some time. And so it's not that with, with one time you, you go with uh, colleagues to a lunch or, or, or something of the sort and, and you don't kind of jockey your way to be next to your boss. Um, you know, it, it doesn't happen just one time, but, but engage in it um, for a while. And see if you might discover that the great wisdom that Jesus gives us, that when we don't look to build up our ego in something that isn't true, oh, I must be in the front row. <laughs> well, maybe not. You thought you were to be there, but you're not. What happens when we engage with humility and we get lifted up? And the most important lesson of all, and again, this is what Jesus reveals to us, is that our Lord is saying that you already deserve the best seat. I love you <laughs> with a love that cannot even be described. It will not be your proximity to the boss or the leader that gives you your worth. It won't be because of where you sit in comparison to others that will give you worth. What you are able to afford, those first class uh, tickets on an airline, that isn't what gives you your worth or your value. You are no longer chained to that at all. Instead, what gives you your value is you are created in the image of God and you are freed from those practices. You are freed from those chains 
and those lives. You have value just as you are, and especially as you live as you were created to be. Those are great words, and maybe you're nodding in agreement, but does our ego know this? Are they words that are engraved in our heart? Spiritual practices like this help us to grow in faith, to know who we truly are. So allow today's lesson, take it with you all week beyond Sunday. We're in this practice of faith. That is where we grow into what is true. So until next time, God bless you.